Hi guys, welcome back to the oil painting channel. Today is going to be a bit of a seascape, possibly a landscape from Cornwall. So let's roll that intro. And let's see how we get on. Okay, so before I go any further, let me just say that this is a condensed version of the full length video. Now, it's almost impossible to do an oil like this in such a small, narrow time field. So the full length version has yet to be a finished edit and go somewhere. Now, for my watercolor channel, there is a watercolor only Patreon now. So all of you who want to sort of learn more from me can nip on over to the Patreon and get something from that by joining that but at the moment there isn't a place to go for my oil paintings so what i'm doing is i'm creating the full length versions i'm sitting on them a little bit and i'm trying to decide where i want them to go it could be that i create a second patron just for oils i could create a very similar thing on my website as a membership site purely for those who want to learn about more about oils and I also could put these on my website as single payout downloads for you to keep, own and watch as many times as you want for a very small fee. Unsure which way I'm going to go at the moment with all of that. So in the meantime, I'm creating these uh, condensed versions for my YouTube oil painting channel for you to enjoy ahead of time. And if you do want to get involved with seeing some full length videos a little way down the road, Keep your eye on things because I will announce it as soon as I've made those important decisions and then you can get involved accordingly. And let me know if your thoughts and your interest in that regard, whether you would like to just buy one off downloads or indeed if you would like to get involved with a membership site that gives you uh, new videos each month for very, very little fees, very, very similar to a Patreon. But um, in the meantime, before I go gassing on too much, I want to get into this little audio, this little video for you and show you a little bit more of St. Justin Roseland. So without further ado, I'm going to get on and I'm going to wish each and every one of you well, happy painting. Stay safe, everybody. Catch you in the next video. Bye bye for now. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Now, before we get started, let's just quickly talk about the board. It's three millimeters MDF maximum density fiber board it's 8 by 12 in size and been given three coats of gesso and sanded before i started the painting now i'm drawing in paint i prefer to do that you could use a pencil you could also use uh, charcoal or some other uh, form of drawing implement but i prefer to go straight in with the paint now i've plotted the shed the boat shed and i'm working now on the first of the three boats and i'm trying to get that shape in retrospect now i do say that uh, i have altered the composition slightly the boats have been moved over it's been condensed i've shortened the distance between the boats with each other and also the shed i wanted to configure my design of painting within the 8 by 12 format and otherwise i would have needed to have maybe thought about 8 by 14 or 8 by 16 so i chose to condense everything down and make it work for me i used the straight edge just to plot where the mast of these vessels are going to be second boat's in and i'm working now on the third vessel they're all yachts and they're all in various states of wherever they're doing one is on the mud one is obviously undergoing a refit in the cradle nearest the shed and this other one i guess is just stored now i did alter the position you'll see them uh, drawn here but i did have a little rethink further into this painting and decided that before i actually started the painting itself that i'd actually just change the location and the sizes of the boats that i had drawn i also increased the size of the shed i just feel that you know when you go through the drawing you plot your way through it you plan it you look at the design and ultimately you don't get everything spot on sometimes you do have to reassess something and change something and you can see here that there are now two masts in the drawing and that's 
really where I decided to change two of the vessels, make one shorter and make one a little higher. Uh, well, both of them actually a little higher in the picture plane. So I think overall that works out. What I'm doing now, though, is quite also important. It's actually plotting more information. I'm going over. I have looked at the design and I have assessed everything. I've made my changes and now I'm actually concreting in a way all the edges and making more defined marks with terms of shadows, linking the boats to each other with the various shadows that will be incorporated into this painting. There is also a lot of very fine detail that will be added later, but there was no point, or there is no real point, in trying to put them in right away. There's no uh, need to do that. It will become confusing, and that's not great. So keep it as simple as you possibly can. Now we're mixing some color up, and I'm looking at some of the earth tones, and a full list of all the paints will be in the description in the show more tab underneath this video. I do try and keep my paints fairly simple and the colors sometimes vary, but overall the, the palette really remains as it is. But I actually used a lot of phthalo green, a little bit of the red in terms of Indian red and also some blues in there. And I felt the first green was just too green, too sort of energetic. And so I put some other colors to tone the green down, i.e. with the reds. And that will turn it down a little bit and make it a darker green without actually being a fierce green. What I also did then was added some um, little bits of lemon to the paint to lighten it up. Now the idea is that we've got a tree line behind the boat shed and we've got a uh, beyond that, we've got a great big hill beyond the tree line itself. So I needed to show the difference. But how I was going to sort of establish a fairly loose but indiscriminate um, leaves in the trees behind and how that would then convey going on into the hills, I actually hadn't quite worked out. But as you see when we go along in this painting, you see that the whole area there develops. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually cutting around all the bright shapes. So that lovely dark hill in the background with all those deep dark greens of the trees are really framing the whole of this painting. And that's what I think drew me to the whole thing. It is a, a shed and it is a series of boats and they're on the mud and there's going to be water in the foreground. But it's that lovely uh, backdrop of the trees, really dark and moody, against the, and the hill that sort of framed all the information so i'm picking my way around all the shapes primarily i've got the boats and i've got the little bit of a hard there and the wall and of, of course coming down to the shed itself at the moment some of the shed detail is not able to be seen it's a different dark it's got a lot of blue and a little bit of burnt sienna into that to make it a warm dark but because it is a very, very close value to the trees and behind, of course, that will all change as I put some more detail in the trees behind. In the meantime, I'm carrying on blocking in and I'm putting a very corrupted purple, ultramarine blues, a little bit of Indian red and just changing how the dynamic of that violet looks. But it's suggesting all the car shadow areas within and around the shed and that was great now the boat itself the blue is made up of cobalt blue and some phthalo blue with a bit of white into it and I just needed to get that fresh color I love trying to recreate man-made colors over natural colors they look so distinctly different in the in the scenery so that's what I've done there now with the other boat I decided to use some ultramarine blue and I varied that up with some uh, other dark values in that shady area. I needed it to be still a blue, but I wanted to make it a lot darker because as that boat goes around and down to meet the keel, the light is lost, of course, and it changes the whole look of the color or the local color of blue on that vessel. Now, I put those detailed bits in and a couple of little light marks and at the same time, I decided there wasn't enough contrast. So I added some more whites to 
the whole thing and increase the blueness or the lightness of that blue and that made a much dis more distinct uh, variation from the keel to that shadowy area but I will come back and I will do a bit more to that later now in the meantime it gives me a chance to start thinking about this beautiful boat in the foreground I was able to use the Windsor & Newton cobalt turquoise light here and that gave me a, a great aqua color and I then put in a slightly more corrupted I used some of that uh, pure light cobalt but I added a little touch of um, sort of other colors a little bit of warmer color in terms of raw sienna into that just to shift it down a little bit and make that a shadowy area not un or not unlike the boat above it but it's a really foreshortened look it does look a little bit peculiar at this stage and the drawing had to be changed as well as you are aware from before now I've put that little bit of orange in there just to shift it away from the pure green what I'm doing now is I'm paling off the hillside. I felt that it was a little bit too yellow, a little bit too much lemon in there. So I'm going back over and I'm making a much paler color, principally the same colors, but I put a bit more white to it and maybe a little bit more cobalt went into that as well, just to cool it all down and give it that lovely change. What I'm doing now is popping a little bit of color that will sort of appear between bits and pieces of the tree. Now you see me adding other greens. I've mixed a, a myriad of different greens. Some of them are cooler, some of them are more acidic. All of them are lighter than the colors underneath. And what I'm doing is just popping blocks of color in. I'm not suggesting particular trees. I'm not even suggesting clumps of branches. I am merely dabbing away and giving a variety of painting marks that I hope once you stand back and look at the picture will give you the indication that there are a masses of different types of trees, foliage, clumps of this, light catching that. That's all I'm trying to do. I would have been there forever trying to paint individual trees. And I know you can do that, and I know people do do that, but that's just not the way I paint. I like to try and keep my stuff as little uh, or as fresh as I possibly can. I know that uh, great detail, you've also got to create a, a lot of time to that and a lot of patience, and I'm not that sort of guy. But I wanted to vary the marks, and I wanted to have this whole raft of different marks that would give you the idea that there are trees going up out of the picture plane and also the hills beyond the immediate line of trees. I hope it was successful. I think it was. I was quite happy with the result. Happy enough to carry on. And then maybe in the cool light of day, if I decided I want to do more, I could actually add more to it. But I've gone back in, surprisingly, with a little bit more yellow here. I didn't think I was going to do that, but I felt that maybe a little bit would help. And so I did come back in right at the top of the canvas and popped in a little bit more acidic, lemon and cadmium yellow with some white just to shift the coolness of that green around on the hillside but i think overall it was successful and i think you got the idea that there is this backdrop it is somewhat diffused because i want you to look at all the foreground or the middle ground and foreground information so i did not want to put in tons of leaves branches and different trees and I'll get off of that subject, but you, you got my thoughts on that, and that's what this was about. It was just a lovely diffused background, but it's still indicative of what I'm trying to convey, and that is a big tree line and hills beyond. Anyway, before I carry on too much with that, we are just varying some of these last marks, some of the lights and some of the darks in that line of trees and in the hillside before we carry on with the rest of the painting. And we're going to actually finish up here now and I'm going to start by looking at other information that we need to look at with regards to the shed and the ground in front of the shed. We've already put the roof in and we've also put the side in and the doors. Now they will alter and what I'm trying to do now is to suggest how the beach should be looking. 
I put it in a little bit yellow to start with, but I did change that. And I wanted the top part of this to be quite dry mud sand or whatever the material is. But as it comes down, it seemed to come down in little bands of color. So I added a little bit of burnt sienna and a bit of raw sienna to change that. There's a little bit more raw sienna than anything else went into that mix. But you see that definite change of color. It possible that it's um, maybe a little damper at that point where the tide's gone down I have no idea how high that tide comes up but then right to the water's edge it got quite cool quite bluish so I changed my palette again and put in a, a bit of a violety blue very similar to the shadow areas around the shed but with a lot more white in it so I made use of that now I'm coming in with some beautiful reds on the bottom of this yacht there in the center. Quite dark, but it will then put some light uh, areas in because the side in front of that brush mark and the keel is somewhat lighter. This was merely the darker color, again, where the light is not hitting the uh, underside of the boat there. I left a little bit of red, though, right in the corner. It's almost suggesting a bit of reflected light. Now I'm coming in with some real light values that suggest all the building and the ground beyond the building. So obviously there is ground. There's actually in the photograph, I think, a motor vehicle parked on some of that ground, which I didn't really want to put that in. And I will take up some of this information towards the end of the painting with a lot more sort of detail, incidental detail, but detail nonetheless. And it helps complete and tell the story. So that will be towards the end of the uh, painting itself. But in the meantime, I'm looking at finer details, subtle details like the frame of the doors. They have a framework and they can be seen. And instead of having just one plain lump of color to suggest the door, I did want to put in a little bit more information, a little bit of light on the cross member to the apex of the shed. And then you can see almost see into the shed one or two bits of tools might be catching a bit of light things like that just little taps of the brush to me but they suggest so much to the viewer and that's why i'm trying to tell the story with as few brush marks as i can but subtly placed they do have uh, a story to tell now i'm coming back in and i'm just really refining the hull of this vessel i'm putting in some more lights around those shadowy areas that come down across the keel they were much thinner and i didn't want them to be too strong as they were at the time i put a lovely light blue uh, and i've used a lot of thalo blue and a lot of white into the side uh, roofing of the shed i don't know what the roofing was i'm guessing it may well have been a corrugated roof i have no really idea now i'm putting in one a few one or two taps of color into that foreshore just mixing it up a little bit and i'm starting to suggest that we've got other bits of information it's not just three bands of color of course it's lots of bits of information little taps of dirt little bits of debris um, other things that are sort of all over the place i'm trying to mix it up a little bit i'm trying to give you the impression that there are many different colors that make up the mud and the sand or whatever that is as it descends down towards the water line i think it was successful i really enjoyed this part because i do like to create all these surfaces and by adding bits of information into them that uh you, know, you don't always see it in the photograph but it helps just by mixing up those uh, values and the eye doesn't settle in one particular place on the mud it takes the whole scene in generally and that works well now you see below the blue of the shoreline i then suggested a bit of the reflection but now beyond the reflection i'm putting in a uh, quite a a greenish blue now it's to, it's a uh, thalo blue bit of cobalt into it a little tap of the winsor and newton orange that i do love just to knock the blue off of its axis a little bit Works great in skies, but also works sometimes in the water, and it's doing so now. I'm suggesting some dirty color values, some darks made up of some blues and some violet colors, just sort of dark gray colors, not black, 
but dark gray colors they are trying to mimic some of the reflections of what are happening on the shore i'm using the same straight edge now and i'm using a rigger and i've got a pigment on the uh, brush a white but i've got a lot more fluid to it it's not runny it's like very thin cream and that way it will run down the side of the brush you just keep the brush just off the painting so that it doesn't track underneath the wood and that way you can bring the brush down and give yourself a nice straight line and okay i'm doing this one by hand but you get the idea on a long mast it's quite handy to have that straight edge and give yourself a mast and i did that in the initial drawing as you if you remember i've done it in the final piece I'm putting a little bit of the superstructure on these vessels the tops the uh, cabins that you can see you can't see too much of them but they are nonetheless they're there the white of the boat and these areas are now are the finishing touches to this part of the painting because we're actually putting in all that wonderful bright mark it's not super detail it doesn't need to be what it is is contrasty and it speaks volumes because it sets the boats out wonderfully against their background single stroke single pass if possible on things like that little boom where you uh, sort of put in lines for rigging try and keep them going the right way i don't always get them right either they can be very difficult especially those like this one coming from the left to the right i tend to sort of mess those up more often than not it's not a big deal this is a lovely little painting and had i done it on site at the time it would have been a plein air painting it would have had many other mistakes going into it i think because a plein air is really just an immediate reaction to the scene it has that uh, spontaneity about it and that crudeness about it that you don't get from many many hours of sitting inside a studio and completing a painting but now what i'm doing really and truly is plotting bits of information i'm looking at things like the walls and you can see here i'm using a dark on that part of the wall that's holding that other vessel up i'm using that dark to define the edge shape of this particular vessel in the same way as the darks of the trees behind outlined the other boats it's a great way and a perfect way to uh, use negative space to throw out and define other shapes in the foreground and that's precisely what i did i put the little bit of dark underneath which was the shadow area of the boat underneath the keel as it goes off down the mud towards the slipway i've got the slipway to do and i've got the water to do yet so we're not there quite yet but we are a long way into this painting and I have had a lot of fun so far. I really do hope you're getting something from this because um, it's, you know, it's never easy painting such detail in a small painting and then filming it and talking about it at the same time. But if you do want to see the full version of this, then it will be coming up sometime either on my website, as I say at the end to remind you, or on uh, as an instant download off my website, or maybe even a second Patreon. I will uh, do the edit to that and make that available at some time. So I do hope in the meantime you don't mind having this um, condensed version to watch and get something from. But I'm sure, like most paintings, there's always something in there that you can spot. You think, ah, oh, yeah, I didn't think about doing it that way. That's not a bad way of doing it. And, you know like all artists we all learn i learn you learn and and that's fantastic anyway i've gone right off topic as usual i do apologize but uh anyway <laughs> let's start talking about putting more and more information in. i'm mixing a bit of light red now and i'm going in and putting that sort of bleach sun look on the side of this boat now whether or not it's been sanded back or whether or not it is just the sun bleaching the red i don't know i'm guessing this vessel's in for a major overhaul it's in this cradle and i've got to paint the sides and that of the cradle which i'm just going to do now and they're again just single strokes down one and then two 
bringing it down to the bottom and then you've got the base of it to put in but on top of that you will put in a little bit of shadow area which I'm doing now all with a rigger just coming down the side I know that the light is coming from the left hand side and above of course so I'm putting my shadows to the right hand side and just make sure you do that make sure when you are painting shadows and and cast shadows and all that sort of stuff in that you get them on the right side I do or, or have seen many paintings from people in the past where they've got shadows everywhere they haven't taken enough thought or control and of course it confuses you you don't know which way the sun's coming from and the painting as a result suffers because it doesn't look right this is a bit of a, a, a large hard it's like a level piece of ground that's been blocked up uh, against uh, the water and so I guess the vessel on top doesn't get wet at any time and it's loads and loads of little blocks and then I put in some fencing bits and pieces I don't think they actually all exist but I just wanted to add that detail it just seemed appropriate to put little bits of information in that uh, add uh, sort of more credence to the story that we're trying to tell in the, as a narrative within this picture you know you've also got little objects in front of bigger objects and they give scale they give uh, a sense of distance and aerial perspective not quite aerial but they sort of give the difference of scale between what is closer what is a little further and what is indeed much further away so they are quite divisive uses if you don't have pictures you know if you do something with nothing like that in it then try and find something that you can do to create that so anyway i'm just putting all these bits of man-made pieces of wood framework in and on the side of the shed i have no idea what that is that i've just painted but it just added to the story added to the scene just cut into some of that dark shape to make it a bit more believable i put the mast earlier on behind the vessel suggesting a few little boats and now we're bringing these two pieces of wood that are part of that uh, floating thing there's a little bit of a floating pontoon type thing laying on the mud there with a lot of rubber tires around it which i've got to put in but the two pieces of wood that emanate from that and go upwards cut right the way through that shed and that's great because it places that in front of the shed it puts the shed firmly behind and again it's another fantastic little uh, sequence of shapes that you can put in to make it all believable and this one had the added bonus that it was a, a structure you could identify but then it had that wonderful reflection into the water so that was just wonderful fantastic now I'm using some darks and I'm putting in some leading lines. On the photograph you'll see there are lots of little tracks and little bits of divots in the mud. People have walked over it. I don't quite know, but they are all sort of leading lines. And fortunately, I assume that people are walking up and down towards the shed or to the other boats. So they all have this natural uh, progression that they start at the bottom and wind their way up towards the shed or to the concrete or to one of the other vessels so they do give you a sense of direction and which is fantastic they crisscross but they are all breaking up the foreshore and giving you that extra pieces of information that as i keep saying make the whole thing quite believable so we're just finishing up with this area now and I will get set to do the water and the reflection very shortly and uh, I'm just tidying bits up and just making sure that as I finish this up that areas that need linking together with the shadows are linked and that everything that sort of emanates out is right and also I cut into one or two places like there I'm just cutting in with the dark into the light it breaks up a solid light area and you could do the same with a dark area. You can just cut into that with some light and break the whole area up. It seems to give detail without actually doing too much work. Now I'm putting in some lights and some mid-tones into the reflection. There are many of them. And some are sort of very, very strong and identifiable. But others are quite 
mm, you're not quite sure what they are, where they are, and what they're actually reflecting. So what I decided to do is not to make so much of that, but to put general marks in that would suggest um, that sort of feeling that there is a confusion of information behind, but it's reflected somehow in the water. And the brain of the viewer uh, would, I hope, sort of suggest yes these are reflections of what's behind and it looks convincing the only real color that i did put in towards the end was a little flush of red with that boat in the center i felt that would work quite well now this water is coming in very very fast but it is still very very shallow so although there were sort of eddies in the water there were also a few dark spots where there were rocks bits of debris that hadn't quite disappeared under the water level at this point but again the way the water's flowing it made some fantastic little eddies and shapes again if you look at it those lines come in towards the center they turn around and they head in through the uh, reflective area up to the shore and those lines on the shoreline take you right up into the shed so the whole thing just works in the terms of the construction and those lead-in lines and now i'm putting some horizontal ones right the way through the whole of this reflective area because of course again the water is uh or has edges and it has shapes and form and by putting these horizontal lines in you are suggesting a flow you're suggesting water and the you know the ripples and all those little bits and pieces the little finishing points for me were putting in these beautiful little boys a little bit of a reflection not too much and a little bit of dark going in this one i put in a different place than the photograph suggests i just wanted that touch of brightness right in the middle of that dark and i think that worked quite nicely so i changed its position a couple of bits of white i don't know what on the beach but again they're reflected in the initial stages of the water and what i do want to do is put a little bit more light not too much uh into the shoreline but i'm just putting a bit of a dark accent under one or two bits on the side of these um pontoon in the tire area and also in the reflections and under the boys however vague you paint certain things such as this little pontoon then putting those little darks in really suggests three dimensions and that's quite important but we're pretty much done i'm putting a little bit of light along the actual edge of the water where it meets the uh, land just where the light is just catching it not too strong not a great deal of sun at that point but just enough to suggest that that's where the water starts so i'm i'm finished up i'm just going to sign off on this picture i've had a lot of fun i hope you have too and i catch each and every one of you in the next video take care bye bye okay guys that's one painting done and dusted i do hope you've enjoyed it i had a lot of fun painting it and i'm sure you've got something from this now don't forget the full version will be on my website or on a private members channel some point in the future i'm making that happen as soon as i possibly can in the meantime i do hope that as i say you've got something from this condensed version enough to be going on with and subscribing and liking and all those things to the channel and i will be adding to this more and more and more as time allows so please uh, bear with me subscribe and uh, pass your comments and if there's any subject that you would like to see me cover in a future video please put it in the comments underneath this i will look at that and if i can i'll fit that into my schedule and make a video about that information or about that subject matter whichever it is i'd love to do it and have a go at it so in the meantime it just as i said at the right at the start Take care, have fun, have lots of painting fun. Catch you each and every one of you in the next video. It'll be here soon. So until that time, take care. I'd love to see you then. Bye-bye. I was down in the Roseland area of Cornwall very recently doing a lot of painting for a gallery that I work. No, I'm not going to say that either.
and that church is right on the banks of I can't say the photograph because no I need to rephrase that don't I okay let's start again as uh, condensed videos and once the new ones are out in the full length if you want to see them and I'm just rambling on again and again and again what am I gonna learn a 10 15 minute oil of this sort of size and give you some benefit from it in such short space no I don't want to do that <clears throat> every time this would probably take 54 well a lot of anyway anyway okay let's start I don't want to start again can't pick it up okay so before I go any further let me just say that this video is a condensed version of the full version of course it's almost impossible to do such a, a, a video on an oil painting in such a confined time period. period. So the full version has yet to sort of, no, start again. It's so frustrating. <sighs> Take whatever. Mm-hmm. 